Hey, this is Lars here and we're coming at you from a double secret undisclosed location here. We're in the Vikings war room and we're preparing for the measly jets. Sorry about that. And, but honey, hey, I'm talking to the wine guy here. You shut up a second. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Oh, okay. What? You need the, your pillow for your feet? I'll be right back. You won't you go anywhere. I'm coming, dear. Okay, let's get back to business here. No more goofing around. Okay, gonna do a wine tasting, I think, before we get on to it. I like your show, by the way. It's really nice. You do, you do good wines there. Um, okay, here's a Minnesota wine that we do. Uh, kind of a nice, fortified thing. Okay, um, got good color. Look at the color there. And, uh, yeah, oh yeah. It's, um, it's good. It's kind of a, an old, new world um, brandy bomb there. Th this ain't no spitting stuff, so we ain't got no spitter thing. Okay, uh, now it's time to get on to a prediction. And before I do that, you know what uh, the Jets and the Green Bay Packers got in common? They're both green, and I hate green. Okay, so our prediction of the week, the Vikes 9. The Jets, two. That's three field goals to two two points, which is a, a safety. Okay, give the Jets four points. That would be uh, two safeties to three field goals. And, uh, oh, honey, the, the Vikings logo's green there. It's supposed to be purple. Purple's mean, you know, like uh, Barney the Dinosaur. Urgh, tough stuff there. Purple people eaters. Green. Okay, one last thing. It comes a rhyme. Duh, Jets suck. Vain Nur Chuck. Okay, wine guy. You're going down. Your jets are going down, so take it away. Here's Gary. The jets suck. I don't think so, Lars. No way. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vain Nur Chuck. Big time episode, the one that I've been waiting for the whole time. Look out. Did I just open bottled water by punching the... We could put this on YouTube and make a million dollars. I'm retiring from the business. Holy crap, that was crazy. Anyway, this is the ep... <laughs> That's unbelievable. This is the episode that I've been waiting for since we started this. Many of you Vaniacs have been watching a long time and know exactly what I talk about when I talk about flavor profiles and different flavors and many don't. Many of you know and many of you don't know that I've always said that getting into the wine business and into wine very young at 17, not being able to taste wines because my parents were smart and good parents, I developed my palate based on the flavor profiles of wines. I read all the tasting notes and I saw things. I saw papaya, I saw pear, I saw fig, I saw, you know, licorice, I saw cassis. Some things I didn't see were Skittles and popcorn and other things like that, but those are things I tasted along the way. But here's the reality of the situation. Today I'm going to taste all the different flavors that I think built my palate. The thing that I think all of you should go out and do, whether you're a connoisseur or whether that you've just started drinking wine yesterday and you've just realized you may not want to drink Boone's Farm anymore. I want you to go out and do this. Now, this could be pricey. Went to my good store locally, King's, nice people. $183, quick little story. Eric and I were in line. He goes, what do you think this all costs? I said, what do you think? You know, I'm that kind of guy. He said a buck 20, I said a buck 80. And you know what? If we didn't buy all the extra cereal that we had to buy to get the cereals we wanted, I think it would have been on the number. 183, not bad. I won, still undefeated. That being said, I was not conscientious of price. We had no time. It's busy. This is a pretty wild episode to do right now. There's a lot going on. It's gonna be an epic, long episode. But you can easily probably do this, in my opinion, on a very serious level, done smart, coupon clipping, paying attention, going to websites that have coupons, probably in the $70, $80 range easily, and I think it'll be worthwhile. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever. This is the way to go. Missed hard. Anyway, let's get started because we've got a lot to do. I actually have no idea how I'm gonna even start this. This is crazy. The tastes of wine. 
Let's start with cranberries. Some nice dried cranberries, you know, pretty cool. And you know, cranberries are fun for you and me. And let's taste some, a couple cranberries. What I love about cranberries is, you taste these dried cranberries, you know, right away on my palate, it makes me think of a nice Barbera or Dolcetto. It makes me think of Piedmont quite a bit. Obviously, they're very nice flavor profile. Um, I like them. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but Barbera, Piedmont, that's what I like, and, and that's a classic thing you definitely need to try is cranberries, very nice. Blackberries. This one you have to get if you're gonna to put together something. Blackberries are something we talk about all the time. I like blackberries, so do you. Mm -hmm. I can sit here for an hour listing all the products that have blackberry characteristics, but obviously Cabernet, Merlot, Petit Verdot, some Malbecs. I mean, this is a grape, this is a grape, uh, a fruit you have to taste. You've gotta get this flavor down if you wanna to continue to drink wine because it's a core of so many wines. This one I'm really excited about. Referred to as Parechka in Russia. It was a big, big thing in Russia. When we came to this country, we always looked for it. We just couldn't find it because we didn't shop in those kind of good establishments, I guess. This is red currant. And red currant is hugely important as well. You've got to really, really find some red currant. You've got to taste it. Mm hmm. A lot of the Tempranillo grapes, Cabernet, I mean, it goes on and on. This is a core flavor of wine. Again, you have to have this in your mix. We got a lot of things today, but if you don't have that, you're out. You have to have that. Chocolate. We talk about chocolate all the time. Nice little dark chocolate. Good stuff. Lots of wines have chocolate characteristics. I'm going to be talking with my mouth full so don't get mad. The Barolo yesterday had a lot. A lot of wines from Piedmont, a lot of Cabernets have dark chocolate flavors. You definitely, definitely have to seek them out as well. Let's move on. My good friend and yours, Blueberry. Now, what I'm about to get into right now is really how I did it. I really went the jam and jelly and preserve route when I was building my palate. They're really, it just seems to accelerate the flavor. Probably all the things they mix in, but we try to go with all natural stuff. Anyway, Blueberry, a very important component. Very interesting. Yeah, and again, now I remember why I did this. It definitely intensifies the flavor profile in your mouth. Again, Charbonneau comes to mind when I taste this really dark blueberry. Cabernet is almost always in mix with a lot of these things, but um, it's another flavor profile that's the basis of big hearty, big red wines. Obviously, most of you have had blueberry, but the more you can consume, the better. Now, I'm gonna mix it up real quick for a little bit. Let's go with pineapple. And pineapple is very important. Yum, yum, yum. If you're going to be exploring wines from the Alsace, sometimes have little hints of pineapple. Very he heavy flavor profile in Sauvignon Blanc. Um, even Cortese, I find to find little parts of pineapple. I absolutely think you need to have pineapple in your diet, so you gotta get it in there, get your palate used to pineapple. And I want you to do this several times. I mean, look, we're going through nothing. You can do this often, let's move on. Black cherry, we talk about that quite a bit. Black cherry, another classic, always makes me think of Bordeaux. Um, you get it quite a bit. This is kind of thick stuff. There you go, so that's pretty nasty. Hum. Mm. Now this makes me think super cult wines, you know, all those really things everybody loves, Harlan, Bryan family. This is always very obvious in those big extracted, this is all day Shiraz. I mean, this actually tasted like some of the Shirazes we've had on the show. So definitely need to make sure that is part of your repertoire. Let's move on. What's this? Strawberry. I know you know this one. This is really one that you're gonna definitely have to eat and I don't know if you do, but I'm gonna continue to stuff my safe. We're gonna try to see if I can throw up here today. Mm. That is so good. It's retired, that one. Strawberry is a, a core of so many red wines. Um, and, and it's absolutely something that you need to definitely seek out because um, they're, just, they're just so great. And I love them. And they're very basic on the red fruit profiles that you get in red wines. And so are raspberries. So let's definitely give that a whirl. This looks really good, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And raspberries are interesting. They make me think of a narrative tavla sometimes. Um, 
obviously Washington State. I don't know why, but there's something going on there. I think of Washington State red wines quite a bit when I do um, raspberries. Let's move on. Oh look, it's black currant. Uh huh. And you know what? It's not the same thing as cassis. Remember how many people tried to call me out on that in the early days before you knew who I was? Anyway, black currant, and this is the only one you definitely have to have because this is found in so many red wines and you've got to establish this flavor profile. As you can see, I took a nice chunk because I'm working on my palate. We're always learning about wine all the time. Nobody knows everything. Nobody knows anything, really. Oh, there's a little piece of it. All right, this is awesome. Try to find the hero one because they got little pieces in there and I gotta tell you, that basically tastes like every red wine I've ever had. Uh, it's really right down to it. It's absolutely, positively the core of so many red wines. Let's move on. This one's a kind of new one for me, so I had to grab it. Black Raspberry. Black Raspberry, so I have to check it out myself because I was like, you know what? That's one that I want to establish into my repertoire. So I'm having fun here too. This is really wild. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like even like chunks of them. It actually looks like pretty cool, actually. 100% fruit. So, and no cane sugar. And you know what? I'm so pumped up right now. Honestly, this is why you're gonna love to do this at home with your friends and family. Put the video on in the background. Listen to me chomp away. This is a subtle little flavor. It's a little bit different, and you know what? It reminds me of black uh, berries mixed with raspberries, but now I can honestly say I will use the term black raspberries because there have been, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, from South Africa, I tend to get a lot of this flavor profile, and it's something I've never used before, and right on the spot. This, this is why I'm pumped up. This is definitely a way to go. I better get going because we had a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna steamroll through a couple things. Are you serious? This is gonna take forever. Anyway, Royal Fig. Another classic profile. You get in a lot of different wines. I'm gonna go fast like this. Um, Royal Fig is very interesting. Um, reminds me of a lot of champagne quite a bit. Um, sparkling Prosecco. It's definitely a very important profile. Let's move on. Oh, here it is. Mango, uh huh. Chardonnays, Sauvignon Blancs, Albarinos, Pinot Grigios, mango. Move on. Papaya, mm. Rieslings, Chardonnays, Sauvignon Blancs. Let's move on. Kiwi, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, of course. Apricot, Champagne. Um, what else does this make me real? Verdicchio, um, Roussan, even a little bit of Roussan. Different kinds of apples, make sure you get a bunch of them. This is the pinata, which I have no idea what that means. I like it, it's just that, you know, I don't wanna get full. Very nice, you know, makes me think of champagne. Some Rieslings, not bad at all. Red Delicious. Again, very Chardonnay. You get a lot of these subtleties and these, not these over oak. This reminds me of a very nice Macon Village. Granny Smith. Again, Chardonnays, but you know what this also reminds me of? A lot of Pinot Biancos, which I really like. And this has that flavor profile. Let's move on. This was really cool. I had to buy four of them. Fragrant pears. Supposedly when you open this sucker, it really opens up nicely. And it does, actually it smells like a wine. It smells like a champagne, really obviously actually. You have to get one of these, you can really see it. Here, try it. I mean, these are really cool. And delicious. Wow, I love food. All right, let's move on. We gotta get it going here a little bit. Black licorice. I mean, makes me think of port. Makes me think of um, a lot of other things that I get through. What do I get through on black licorice a lot of times? Tanat. Makes me think a little bit of Tanat. Really, really nice. Red licorice. God, this looks like poop licorice. Look at that, it's nasty. 
again, very nice, you know, I, I think of Alicante a lot of times when I think of red licorice, really, really good. Get a bunch of different figs. Figs are great. First of all, I love them. Fuck them all. I really possess different kind. A lot of the flavor profiles that you're going to get in wine, and that's why they complement so much with wine. You see them with cheese and figs and wine. Real great way to go. Again, a lot of terroir in figs, which I love. Believe it or not, I'm getting a lot of Pinot Noir flavors in the palate here. Walnuts. We forgot almonds. Walnuts. Um, makes me think of a, a slavener. Makes me think of Alsace. You know, walnuts tend to make me think of Alsace, no doubt about it. Popcorn. Butter. Real heavily. Blasto butter. I mean, are you kidding me? Oh. California Chardonnay at its finest. Mm. Real good. Oh, look. Almonds. Almonds. Almonds bring a really interesting flavor profile. Um, they tend to remind me of really crisp white wines, Chenin Blanc, as we did, but sometimes also characteristics of Chardonnay, no doubt about it. Especially Sonoma Coast and Central. Gives me a lot of that. So, um, really interested in almonds. I like almonds a lot. And then fun things. Chocolate-covered cherries. I hate them. Oh, I really hate them. But they are clearly a very, very obvious flavor profile. A lot of times in red Zinfandels comes to mind quite a bit. Um, and other things. I like California Chardonnay. All right, let's move on. All you maniacs, you know this. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nothing makes me think Dom P more than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Chocolate Puffs, the new chocolate version. Was that a mess? That was a great clip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A little less subtle, really more fun. Show my weakness. Skittles. How many times do we talk about Skittles on the show? Enough to make you know that they're a foundation of my palate, and they should be yours. The wide arrangement of these artificial flavors make me think of what's bad a lot of times with some of the reds from Australia, but also what's good sometimes out of very exciting whites from around the world. Listen, we tasted a lot of stuff, and I have to say, real quick, I watched what was going on in the forums yesterday. Smiling Pelican, I totally understand. I am not confused that I wear two hats, but hopefully over time you'll see, and I think most people have, and people will continue, that this is all about us. We're trying to change things. Oh, did you think things were done? You're crazy. Let's move on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I told you this was going to be an epic. Let's move on. This is where it gets a little dangerous, so bear with me. New flavor profile that I've been really talking about lately is goji berries from China. They're really, really interesting. I know very little about them, but you know, I started eating a couple because Eric eats weird stuff, and he had some. And I find them very interesting because I find them to have the flavor profile. Of like, San Giovese, a little bit of Carmenier, they're really interesting, and I definitely want to start bringing them into my repertoire. Where do I start? Bacon. This is a great way to do the bacon profile because a lot of times I do feel it's more bacon bits than anything else. This makes me... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, you get this flavor profile a lot of times in, um, in, um, in you know, in Pinot Noir. Speaking of Pinot Noir, Sweaty sock. We talk about it a lot. You don't think I love you? Watch this. Sorry, Eric. Sweaty sock, you know, makes me think old world. Makes me think of all those flavors that I really enjoy from there. You know, brings a lot of terroir to the, you know what, I don't even need this. Let's move on. Again, 
get a mix of mushrooms. This is one of the definites that you have to have when you do this party that I'm doing right now. We're having a party in my mouth. Don't get ridiculous. Here we go. Try different mushrooms because what these do is they really allow you... Mm. I mean, that really tastes like a lot of Barolos and Barbarescos. A lot. And definitely hints of, um, of um, many of the Pinot Noirs. Some of the older wines, those stinky wines, but nonetheless great. Dolcetto comes to mind. Nebbiolo. Um, just really, really nice. Brings a lot to the table, and I really enjoy it. Olives. Get a mix. Red and green. Red and green? Black and green. Olives are better. Um, we all have them. I love them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that olives are fantastic and are, are, are a great way to get a flavor profile into your mouth. Cabernet shows olives. Pinot Noir shows olives. Malbec shows olives. Lots and lots of different wines show olives. Let's mix it up a little bit here. Wait a minute. Let's stay on this red wine theme. You know what this is? That's right. Asparagus. We talk about asparagus a lot. You know, you have asparagus because so many red wines, especially when they're young, show asparagus. And you need to know what asparagus tastes like. It's got to be in the mix. Sage. Something I don't use often in terminology. Very greeny. Very orangey. Um, you know, sage. Very minty. Actually reminds me a little bit of Heights. Um, some, so some of those eucalyptus cabernets, actually, you would think sage is a little bit more of a white profile thing, but it's really not. It's a quite excellent. I really like it. Let's move on. Orange peel. Orange peel's important. Um, you know, a lot of New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs do orange peel. Um, we talk about orange peel quite a bit. Chardonnays, pretty important stuff. Let's move on. Broccoli, again. It's a red wine thing. We talk about it a lot. You get a lot of greenish aspects into our uh, into um, Cabernets and a lot of wines of that nature. Um, you know, so they're very important. Thanks, Eric. Good. And uh, you should definitely know what broccoli tastes like because a lot of red wines bring that greenish characteristic and mixes with the strawberries and it's very important to know. Bell pepper, green pepper. You know how much I love to talk about this. Really important. Because green pepper brings so much to the characteristics and the terroir of many different wines from around the world. Again, I'm stressing Cabernet has so many of these. I'm going to stop even mentioning them. But, you know, a lot, a lot of the Italian wines from uh, different parts of the country are really, really heavy on it. Let's move on. Soy sauce. This should be good. You remember that Pinot Noir? Let's do it. Salty. Whew! Good though. You know, really interesting wine because I'm starting to see more and more Pinot Noirs, especially some of these New World Pinot Noirs, show this characteristic. I don't know where it's coming from, but the more soy sauce I consume in my palate, the more I'm starting to see those flavors. Let's mix it up a little bit here. Let's do the one that everybody's scared about. Cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon, very important. We've done Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon's very important. It's a very key aspect to a lot of champagnes. It's subtle on a lot of Rieslings. I think of Gewürz from a lot of times come through with a little bit of cinnamon. It's definitely a subtlety in a lot of different wines. I even see it popping up in red wines, so I think it's extremely important. Oh boy, it's going to start getting interesting here now, folks. So if you've been hanging in, you're in for a treat. Let's do black pepper. We talk about black pepper quite a bit. And it's very important because it's important to wines. It brings a lot of, you know, 
you know, you, you notice it very subtle, <laughs> not as subtle as this. But it's a core characteristic to a lot of Cabernet based wines. Um, I also see pepper a lot of times in red Zinfandels. They come through very heavy. You definitely need to do this. And then you can get silly. We don't have time now because it's taking forever. But you can take the black jam, the red, you know, the, the jammy stuff and put some pepper on it. You can grab a strawberry, put some pepper on it. You can really do those kind of things. White pepper. Somebody said to me, what the hell are you talking about? When I referred to white pepper once, white pepper. I have it in my eye, but I'm going to troop through because that's what I do for WLTV. But the reality is, is that white pepper is very common in a lot of wines, I find, especially from the, you know, the northwest parts of uh, Italy. I find, I find that it comes through in a lot of wines from uh, California on uh on the Cabernet side, especially up north, makes me think of Oregon, believe it or not, Oregon Cabernets have had a lot in the past. This is only gonna get better. White clove. Let's do it. We'll talk about it. That tastes like the dentist. I think my tongue is numb. But however, it's important for you to do this as well. A very common thing that I taste in a lot of different things. I think my tongue is numb. Did anybody know that? I think it officially numbed my tongue. Again, very interesting and very fun. And very fun. I have no idea what this is. So I'm trying to put it into my repertoire. This is arrow root. So let's taste this. I don't know what this is. I don't taste anything, so let's move on. Um, time. You know, this is very, very interesting. Okay, your nose really in there. It's very important you really suck up all the flavors. Um, this, this makes me think of some of the Chilean Sauvignon Blancs. As a matter of fact, I would have loved to be able to use this back in that Casa Marine that I loved, but I didn't really get into time into recently. Or, no, you know, so time's very important. And you gotta get in there, you know? You just gotta get in there and you gotta try it. And now I know. And knowing's half the battle. G.I. Double Joe. Alright. Paprika. Oh man. So, you know, gotta be real small in this one. Paprika, um, makes me think of some of the Ribera de Duero wines I've had in Spain. Um, it's got a little bit of, it's very interesting. Some characteristics of uh, Petit Verdot as well, a little bit of Malbec as well. Let's move on. Rosemary, very important, something you don't see me do a lot of because I'm not really that big on it, so I'm trying to get more into myself. But on the nose, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it, you know, it, it really brings some characteristics that I've definitely seen in wines. Um, okay, a characteristic that I think you find in, in champagne sometimes, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit limited because the entire half of my tongue, I think, is permanently uh, numb. Let's move on. I'm sorry for the uh, little lemon peel. We've done, uh, did we do lemon peel? Did we do twice? No, we did orange peel. A little too much, but the lemon peel is good. You know, lemon comes through in a lot of wines. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Saw a lot of Sancerre from the Loire Valley. When I think of lemons, I always think of Sancerre. Um, Viognier as well. There's a lot of things that... Lemon peel is definitely different than lemons, and so you got to really experience it. you got to go out and find the lemon peel. Paper. It's important because this helps you, and even, you know what, wet paper. This is important because 
paper and cork are really interesting characteristics in corked wines. And the more you eat paper and the more you try cork, the more you'll be able to realize that flavor profile. <sighs> Rock. Wet rock. Got this outside. You heard me refer to wine as a wet rock. You've been waiting. There you go. You know, it's that, it's that blue stony kind of flavor. We've seen a lot of crisp white wines, Sancerre, different things like that. You know, it's one of those things. And finally, jalapeno pepper. I couldn't even say it right. I want to mention a couple things before I eat this and get off on the show. One, you, and a little bit of me, maybe nothing left. We're changing the wine world. Two, your question of the day is, would you ever do this? Let me know. And if you do, please tell me how many different things, and tell me some things that I didn't try that you'd like me to try. And a couple of quick other things. One, I, I get every email of back episodes. I've seen a lot of people post, I hope Gary sees this, or I'm sure Gary doesn't see this, but if you post on back episodes, leave a comment, first time watchers, lurkers, things like that, I will see it and will respond. Jalapeno pepper. And if you thought that wasn't bad, I always talk about, <laughs> I always talk about it. The terroir, the dirt, the soil, that's how you really get in. This is fine New Jersey wine right here. That's right, you gotta eat the dirt because that's how you really get in there. And that's how you know where it's coming from. Um, it's imperative. And now, some 99 Cristal, baby. I give the dirt a 91. 99 Cristal, 87. This is Gary Vaynerchuk. We'll see you next time on Wine Library <laughs> TV.